Hello, in this one, I want to talk about how I approach my seasonal progression. This is somewhat a guide, but it might not be friendly to new players, as there's not going to be any footage. However, everything is done in a systematic way, so it should be easy to follow. I'm going to upload this file to Google Docs, so, so anybody could read about it. Maybe I'm going to update it a little bit. Depending if there is something to add after the actual rebirth season patch notes comes out. But let's start. So through Act 1 and, one and 5, the first main thing to do when you create your character is to go to Rune Hunter Registration Office and pick up a God Blessing with Movement Speed Increase. And character traits with double reward when disassembling and item drop rarity. After that, I highly suggest to follow a guide. If you don't have any guide and you want to do your own stuff, choose your main damage skill and depending on what type of skill you choose, you want to pick up an additional damage link. After that, quick attack, quick cast, if you cook fast if you are spell, confidence, find weakness if you critical, and persistence if you maximize damage. But this is only works early to the game. And you will need to do a lot more if you want to make a build. Then you need to choose movement skill. Leap attack, roll, teleport on any of those. You can use a disarm link to decrease the cooldown. Enhance skill. For defense, you can do bulwark of protection or siphon life. I highly recommend bulwark of protection as it's easier to use because siphon life requires you to have a bunch of health. Offensive ones can be fighters right if you if your main skill has melee tag. Release element if it's uh, any type of element damage. Vital strike is for critical builds and persistent strike is for maximized builds. Any enhanced offensive or defensive you choose, you can use increased duration and time acceleration. So yeah, this basically sums up early stuff. After this, you will need to figure out quite a few stuff if you want to keep doing your own build. But this at least is gonna get you through the first acts. After that, I highly suggest to find a guild. Guilds are basically for buffs that you get for by doing donations. Donations is your gold or just guild tokens that you drop on the maps. Guild has guild rates. In those guild rates, you can drop specific link runes that's called dampen resource cost and enhance effect. These two are really important for any build and a lot of people are running those. At the same time, you can drop some defensive seals Physical, elemental, resistances, and so on. So those defensive seals are really strong, and build rates are highly recommended. Another thing to know early is that every exploration gives you gemstones, and there is a gem store in which you can buy rune birth essences. Those essences are acquired to craft your your six links, and you only need 750 birth essences to craft your fix, first six link. 100% because there is a pity system and it lets you acquire it 100%. You can get 750 in like act 6 or 7 if you do a little bit more exploration and you pick up those rewards on the waypoints. However, most likely you're gonna get your first 6 link in like 300 rune birth essences. So 6 links are no longer a big problem in this game. You're gonna be advanced a little bit. So there is another thing to pick up that's going to give you damage, and that is Offensive Seal. During uh, the early season start, we always get some skill rune selection boxes. Most of the time, those are blue. In the blue boxes, you can find Seal of Condensed Destruction, that is for physical builds, Seal of Condensed Elements, that is for elemental builds, Seal of Critical makes sense, and Seal of Persistence is for maximized builds. You really want to have an Offensive Seal, it gives you shit-tons of damage. Skill and rune leveling and enchanting. This is basically a priority on how you should approach your skill leveling as growth material early is very limited. So first of all, level up your main damage skill and enchant your main damage skill firstly. And do not stop ever. Your main damage skill always has to be max level. Main damage links only have to be up to level 35. After that, it's better to enchant it to yellow or even legendary and even awakening. As after level 30, those links doesn't give you that much damage. After that, you want to focus on attack enhance, offensive seal, defensive enhance, defensive seal, and movement skills. I should add in here that also attack enhance links. 
After that, this is basically really early game and nothing much there was to do. On Act 6, that's where the f more things start to come up and more systems starts to open up. So you're gonna unlock a charm system and for charms themselves, you want to get any that has damage multiplier, crit rate, crit damage for critical builds, maximize chance, maximize damage for maximize builds, and then if you need some defenses, you can do elemental chaos resistances, HP multis, and HP is flat. It doesn't matter what kind of blessing or what kind of type charm you're gonna have, just focus to get what you need the most. It's either damage or it's resistances. At the same point, you're gonna unlock jewel system. Jewel system is new stuff. And in order to unlock it, you want to finish blue quest line. Focus on it and do not skip it. Otherwise, you're gonna have some problems later. However, you're not gonna be able to do a lot of jewel stuff because we're gonna lack the main material to actually do it. And this is only gonna be fixed later into the game and we can actually grind for those. So, doesn't matter right now. Another big advice is upgrade and craft every new tier. If you, cause Every new tier, the damage of weapons and the defenses of your equipment increases. I I write it down upgrade or craft. I don't know the new rebirth season how it's gonna be. And maybe you're not gonna play rebirth, so you're gonna need craft as rebirth season. They said that they're gonna drop items already with all the options in build. So yeah. But remember, just change your equipment every new tier. Alchemy Bench is not really that much required, but it's gonna be open for you. You can do some skill skill changes if you want. You can try some new skills because the transfer is free. And you can craft some damage potions or resistance potions. Act 10. So Act 10 is gonna be your new breakpoint, and there are quite a few things you need to do. So first of all, you need to complete Saluto. By that I mean you need to do green, green quest line, which it's gonna open you a chaos statue, and then it's gonna open you a relics. Relics is like pets. And this is really generalized advice right now. Sebda, you want a Sebda relic if you're doing elemental damage, and Castle relic if you're doing physical damage. However, if you're following a guide, just do what the guide says. Another big thing in here is buy mysterious elements. So those mysterious elements are material that lets you level up your relics. You can find those in gem store and you can buy up to 500. Those 500 elements gonna get you up to like level 21 or 16 immediately. Don't buy them every single day. You want to buy like for two or three days because leveling a relic is really fast process right now. So you shouldn't have any problems. Just remember that you can buy some of those mysterious elements from the gem store. Jump fusion. So this is a new system that's gonna open up. You, you're gonna get a selection box for Chaos Orb tier three and for charms that are all gonna be tier three. And you want to pick up charm time that you are doing that the damage type of your main skill. So if you're doing like Frost Strike, which is called, you want to pick up Mirosetti charms. What type of charms give you what type of damage? You can check in game just by pressing question mark in the charm interface, but Quick one, like Hamal is physical, Capri is fire, Mirosetti is cold, and uh, Vespa is poison. So whatever your type is, pick up those charms, go onto the charm fusion, you can find it, you're gonna see it on your map, and just fuse your first Chaos Orb. During the Act 10 and 13, you're gonna be encountering some events. So first event is out of Blessing, it's gonna be a lot of portals and it's mainly used for relic levels, so do not skip these. Red Moon Altar is good experience and it's mainly used for orb drops, but this early into the game you're not gonna drop any orbs, but if you are fast clearing those, it's good XP, so you should do it. If you can't clear those fast enough, don't bother. After finishing Act 15, you're gonna be able to do Charm Fusion again. And that Charm Fusion is gonna be Chaos Orb Tier 4. Just follow the same instruction as Chaos Orb Tier 3. You want to get yourself uh, Chaos Orb Tier 4 to your main skill type damage. Blacksmith Shop, 
So if you're struggling with some equipment, you can buy some Mr. Equipment and that Mr. Equipment can give you some authority stuff. At the same time, it's going to be high tier and you have a chance for a unique item. If you have a lot of gold, but you're still struggling to progress, this is, this is a good choice. If not, just progress on your own pace and don't waste your gold for nothing. After that, your chaos statue progression is going to start. In order to do that, you need to do green quest line. That green quest line is important as it's going to give you specialization points on your zodiacs. And green quest line was a little bit confusing in the prior seasons. Maybe they're going to update it, maybe not. But if you are struggling to find the green quests, remember that you, from time to time, you're going to need to go back to Act 11, Act 12, and Act 13 to pick up like the main quest for this. So yeah, this would be my advice. Leveling. So it's your Chaos Statue leveling and your Chapter leveling. And for this, you need to know two things. First of all, you can buy great cards in General Peddler Shop if you somehow dropped any of the cards that you needed. And do yellow cards at growth level plus one. This is going to be harder to do, but it's going to be so much more XP. And leveling early into the season, it's really slow. Another thing is, is Blacksmith Disassemble Shop. In that Disassemble Shop, you're going to be able to buy T1 and T10 yellow card selection boxes, which is a big deal, as you no longer need to grind any specific cards. And it's much easier to drop specific charms that you need, as every single card has a specific authority on it. So for example, if you're doing Yunos cards, Yunos cards only drop Boreal charms. It has a chance to drop other charms, but that's the main idea. At the same time, in the shop, you can use, you can buy unique prefix suffix essences and some skill link rune selection boxes. This shop is a big progression shop. And my advice is, do not forget to disassemble your items. Always disassemble and always use the shop. At this point, any charms is not going to cut anymore. You need to focus the co on correct charm type that you were focusing on your Chaos Orb. Hamal for physical, Capri for fire, and so on, Mirosetti for cold. Event selection. So this is where I'm going to put most of the information as it's going to be easier for me instead of explaining every single stuff separately. So. On Chaos Statue, you're going to be able to select any event you want. These events are going to require Chaos Points, but those are acquired passively every single time you clear a map. You're not going to be able to sustain those if you're going to keep doing the events every single time. However, these event selections just mean that the event is going to be 100% on your map, but it doesn't mean you can't get it randomly. Sometimes you can get it randomly, and the prop rate of those events is kind of high. So. First one is Mist of Illusion, and I'm gonna do it yellow because it's really important. Mist of Illusion opens you two things. So, first, in order to do Mist of Illusion, you're gonna need to sacrifice some charms to extend the time the event can last. When you do that, you can drop a third eye, and that third eye is required to drop Lacrimas. So, first, first time you're gonna do it, you're gonna use charms, and you're gonna have a chance to drop third eye. If you drop a third eye, the second time you open up your Mist of Illusion, you're gonna use that third eye and charms to open up a portal, and in that portal you're gonna be able to drop Lacrimas. At the same time, during Mist of Illusion event, you get Star Fuser upgrade stones. And with those stones, you can do charm upgrade slots. So, this one event is opening you up to so many stuff and so much damage early, it's necessary to do it. Don't do it too early, but on fresh accounts, I most of the time I do it at like, even before level 100, I do it like at level 85. So yeah. So you can find charm upgrade slot interface where you did your charm fusion. And what kind of upgrade slots you need to focus on is this blessing effect, as it's gonna help you with your charm blessings. All option blue, and you want to have one blue charm and you want to buff that blue charm with this specific blue option charm upgrade slot. At the same time, there is a yellow one, so you want a yellow for that one. The, and these three are actually most important early, but if you have more charms, more gold, more star fuse upgrade stones, you can do prefix option and suffix option. This is only early stuff. 
You want always to progress your charm upgrade slots because this is big damage increase. At the same time, if you have your third eye, you're gonna be able to drop Lacrima. Early game, it doesn't mean what kind of Lacrima. It, it's really gonna be good to have any Lacrima. Is it defensive or offensive? Is it blue or yellow? Doesn't matter. Just drop any Lacrima you can use. After that, red, after that, other events is not that big of a breakpoint. This was the biggest one, and this event is the most expensive one, and it opens up you a lot of damage. After that, Red Moon Altas, those are for the origin stat resist and damage orbs. But in order to get those, you need to clear the Red Moon Alta absolutely fully, so you need a lot of damage. So you, you don't have to do it early, you can save those points to do them later. Alta of Blessing, I don't suggest to pick up this event. As you reach like around 2x35, basically when you reach 2 relics at max level, it's not really worth to do it anymore. As the progression slows down, and you're gonna get it eventually. Memory runes is basically a nice extra experience, and at the same time they drop traces of memory. Traces of memory are cards, I'm gonna explain about those later, I'm gonna skip right now. But they are basically used for alchemy benchcrafting. Emergency request is uh, black market currency. About that later. Yunos Vein drops Apollyon Bones, and with those Apollyon Bones, you can get, enter into Yunos Dungeon, and in the Yunos Dungeon, you can drop some jewels. At this point, when you start doing Yunos Dungeons, you can start imbuing your jewels into your items. Serpent Statue. Serpent Statue is an interesting thing. It's probably going to be the one that you're going to do the most, as it drops charm, charm Upgrade Essences, to basically upgrade your charms. This one, it depends on you. If you feel you need some charm upgrades, you do this. Black market. So I was talking about some black market currency. So what is black market? It's basically a progression shop. In that one, you can find skill room selection boxes, legendary charm skill link upgrades, strong crystals to expand your skill board, vest essences for to for easier crafting. I'm gonna keep it simple and unique equipment boxes. Those can be seasonal and non-season. What does it mean? That every single time a new season comes up, the black market is updated to drop to have specific boxes that only drop specific seasonal uniques. But yeah, black market is a big thing. Do it and don't skip on it. Black market is done basically by accepting some quests that you can complete on your chaos statue every single day. You're gonna do it once or twice and you're gonna understand it. Unique cards. So you're gonna be dropping some unique cards. Only two of those are important. Tier three cursed prisons. It's really easy to level on those cards, and I would stop around level 92, level 95, because after that it becomes a little bit slower. And on your main character, on your first main seasonal character, your level doesn't matter as much as your Chaos Statue level, so also focus on your Chaos Statue. Tier 6 Nightmare of Kalikoda, this is black market currency, and this card is basically money making. You can always sell this card on Auction House, it's a really good one. Because Black Market can give you some insane stuff, as I mentioned before. There is a big breakpoint on your Chaos Level statue. And that is when you reach level 145 maps. Because those maps start to spawn Cursed Enemies. And for those Cursed Enemies, you're gonna need so many more stats. However, Cursed Enemies drop so much good stuff, that if you do 145 level map under 4 minutes, it's still... Better to do this one than focusing on like 144 level, even if you do it under two minutes. So yeah, this is a big breakpoint. What what I'm saying is that it's worth to invest time in 145 maps than it's in 144s. And remember, after this, Chaos Statue starts to get much harder. At the same time, you're gonna be dropping Exodium cards. Exodium cards is basically season five upgrade. With uh, some interesting stuff. So first of all, in order to acquire Exodium cards, you want to purify Ancient Danger at level only, at level three only. So you're gonna have an interface and just wait for the Danger level three. This actually might change as it was season five unique content, but we're gonna see. I'm putting it down here. If it's gonna change, that means it's gonna either be passive or it's gonna stay the same. Yeah. So. What are those Exodium cards? So those Exodium cards lets you target farm materials by selecting specific waypoints in those Exodium cards. Those waypoints can be crafting essences, some potion materials, and trump crystals. 
These are the most important ones that I would suggest to focus on. There is also skill and link rune essences, but I think going for some... It kind of depends. Going for crafting essences is probably the biggest worth, especially early. At the same time, those Exodium cards can drop you a Greater Sanctum of Prophecy boss, and that boss drops yellow disassembled materials. Just by disassembling items, you can only get gray materials, and you're gonna see in shop there is a lot of stuff for yellow disassembled materials, and basically this is what this boss does. And it also drops specific uniques <coughs> from that boss. Specific uniques, there's only a few, and they're not, they not crazy good. Yuno's Dungeon. So this is where you get most of your jewels. At the same time, Yuno's Dungeon is not only good for jewels, Yuno's Dungeon is, Yuno's dungeon is, is just broken. It's the best skill board progression you can do. You drop so many skill and link rune upgrade essences, it's insane. That's why I didn't put it in Exodium cards, because it's just better to do Yuno's Dungeon for this specific stuff. At the same time, you get a lot of stuff. You get crafting essences. Oh, you get basically get everything. But mostly, you want to get jewels and skill, skill link rune essences. These are the fastest ones to get. At the same time, you can drop a Great Alive Abyss boss, which... Great Alive Abyss boss card, which drops Black and Star jewels. Like, Black and Star jewels are the end game thing that you want to get. At the same time, you can get Black Market Daily Account Currency, so that's called Christian Certificate, to increase your bounty missions in order to acquire the Black Market Currency. Constellation of Time is dead, but I'm gonna talk about it. It's basically really outdated. You want to do this for Zodiac Stones. In order to use Zodiac Stones, you're gonna need a specific amount of um, points into specific uh, Zodiac, tree mass Zodiac Trees, but yeah. This one... I only do it once, and they never min-max my Zodiac Stones. They are kinda... They don't give as much damage anymore. You can do this if you don't have anything else to do, and at the same time, Constellation of Time, it's kinda really boring, but just my opinion. However, Constellation of Time has a decent rate of unique item drops. It, it drops those unique items in the final rewards, and from champions. The thing is, with champions, it drops unique boxes. There is, like, uh, bad boxes, and there is freaking insane boxes. However, for freaking insane boxes, you need to kill around 500 to 1000 champions in order to drop one. This is basically a legendary box. Bad boxes drop every single time. One kill, one box. Yeah. So, it was really good, but it's no longer as good. If you want to aim for this box, just don't. <laughs> I did it I did it like two seasons ago. I killed around 500. I didn't drop a single one, so I just gave up. But yeah. This is basically the Chaos statue progression. I put a lot of stuff in here, but at the same time, I explained a lot of stuff. So yeah. After this, after you reach Chaos statue level 20, at this point, it's not going to be new stuff, but... Traces of Memory, those are cards that you're gonna see, and those are used for Alchemy Bench Crafting for first sub-option. So Tria drops Armor, Artemis drops Weapon, and Chaos drops Accessory, Accessory Materials. And you can do that, Alchemy Bench first option, sub-option crafting, you can do it early. Because you get these materials even without doing Traces of Memory, but Traces of Memory is where you're gonna grind those when you need more of those. I'm not gonna get into what you can get, because if you go onto Alchemy Bench and you press Crafting, and you select one of your affixes, you're gonna see what kind of things you can get if you craft with this materials. At the same time, at Chaos Statue level 20, you can start gathering Greater Boss Cards. Greater Boss Cards opens up you to quite a few stuff. First of all, Ilya. And by the way, those later boss cards, you need to complete T11 maps. That's the main thing. You can't do T11 maps before KS level statue 20. And Ilya boss. So Ilya boss drops Star Fuser high upgrade stones. And those high upgrade stones are required to upgrade Chaos Orb slot. 
And on that Chaos Orb slot, you want to pick up Blessing Effect, as it's basically gonna open up you to a lot of damage. Domain of Might. Domain of Might is Serpents, but there is a few questions about it. So first of all, it can drop from Chaos Orb Tier 8 to Tier 10, but this is a question mark. Cause I don't know if you're gonna get a Domain of Might old one, and new one, or only the new one. As the new one supposed to drop tier 10s, and the old one only drops from tier 8 to tier 9. And this I showed you... This is some breakpoints. This is blessing breakpoints. It's probably not gonna make a lot of sense to you, but I'm gonna leave a guide in the description, but this is basically the main idea. If you craft your Chaos Orb tier 7, you can do 1x140 plus, plus some extra for the blessing pot. If you do tier 8, you can do 2x... 2x140, which is 2 blessings, so 2 damage jumps, and if you do tier 9, tier 9 is a lot, you can do a lot of stuff with it, and this is basically endgame content. For tier 10, is unknown, what is gonna be possible, maybe it's gonna be 5 blessings, maybe it's gonna be 6, no idea, or maybe it's still gonna stay at 4, but 4x2, 30%. What these percentages are doing, you can check it in the same charm interface menu. But basically, 140, 140 is always damage jump, and this is what you aim for. 140 is equals damage jump. So 2x40 equals 2x damage jump. Simple. Yeah. Another boss is Anchorage of Golden. This one drops unique artifacts. You can do those unique artifacts, in, you can add those into your relics, and there is three unique artifacts. I might be wrong about one. So the first one is Growth Material Drop, Boss Item Drop Rarity, and Charm Drop Chance. I don't really remember about this one, I might be wrong about this one, so if I'm wrong, correct me, but yeah. Anchorage, I only do it 20 maps, because at the same time, when you do any of these boss maps, you can get achievement, and that achievement gives you title. And most of the time, what I aim for is that title from the Anchorage of the Golden Ring, and Boss Item Drop Rarity, I think. This is the best one, especially when you're running T11 maps. Don't run those on T10s, cause... not worth. T11 worth, T10 not worth. Yep. At the same time, they can drop some legendary artifact essences to upgrade your non-unique artifacts, but I'm not fo focusing too much on that. Land of Authority is basically dropping High Trace of Creation that lets you to do Alchemy Bench, second sub-option crafting. That I talked about the first one, and only with high traces you can do the second one. Unique items. Okay. So this one is really simple ones. These are basically dropping really often in the game. You don't need to buy these. They're gonna be cheap at some point. Just try to drop them. For critical builds, you want cast refractioning 100%. No, no questions. For maximized builds, you want band of certainty. These rings, for these specific builds, are gonna be insane amount of damage. After that, I am, I'm calling it progression uniques. These are good uniques you can check for. I'm not gonna talk about them, I'm just gonna scroll it down. You can slow it down to check. But these are all dropping anytime you do Chaos Statue and some of those are even dropping in campaign. Okay, then Masteries. Enchant Masteries. Those you get just by enchanting items. And what you want to focus on is Weapon. Seasonal Attack 1, Seasonal Attack 2, and Acute Strike. How do they work? So you're gonna be able to add uh, points to this, and basically what you want to do, whenever you add enough points and the another one opens, you want to go to another one. And keep it something like this. 3 out of 10, 5, 5, 10, 5, 10, 3 out of 10. To start with. Same, same with armor. Strong Body, Survival Instinct, you can do Solar Echo later. Survival Instinct is better early into the game. And Solo Echo is more about endgame, Recovery Resilience, and for Accessory Brilliant Life, Quick Feet if you need Movement Speed, and Strength and Center <clears throat> if you need more stats. Sea of Light and Improving Constitution. There is not much to talk about, because this is default stuff for any build. Absolutely any build. Alchemy Mastery is again an interesting stuff. For this one, you can do Modified Recipe if you need Synthesis Acceleration, if you want your table Alchemy Table to synthesize faster. You can use on mana potions, mana potion effects if you need more mana regeneration. Enhanced potion because most likely we're still gonna have enhanced potions season 
where you can get so much enhanced potion effect, it just becomes the best belt in game. Unique brew wise to brew unique potions for basically rune master XP. Spring of Aspiration is for resource cost dampening, which is a must. These two are must. Yeah, these are must basically. And absolute perfection. It's not a bad one. If you have extra points and you don't have anywhere else to spend, pick up this. Okay, now damage progression. Damage progression. So yeah, this one, I can't talk much. Most of about what I'm gonna talk only depends if you're following a guide or you don't, and how you much how much you craft. There's really, really no good advice to to explain the damage progression besides grind the game, craft, and conquire. This is all I have to say. So yeah. So first of all, it comes to basic basics basics. It's good scaling build. And that good scaling build depends on skill rune tooltip and interaction with the game. And primary example is Frost Strike. Even though I don't know Frost Strike might get a nerf, this is not a recommendation. This is just me saying if you see a lot of people playing Frost Strike, there is something good about Frost Strike. And if you are struggling to do your own build, just follow a guide. Another one, correct zodiacs. If you following a guide, it's always gonna be easy. The most damage comes from specialization choice, by the way. Priority is skill link rune awakening, so don't start awakening some bullshit. Always awaken your main skill first, then link runes around your main skill, and then you can start going into seals, enhances, and so on. Correct charms, so this basically boils down to multiple blessing effects. So that was the same as I said, like T9, right? You could do 4x140. So that basically equals 4x damage jumps. That each are, it depends, but each are on average 15%. Yeah. So, correct charms, correct blessings, and gonna give you a lot of damage. Charm upgrade slots, but at this time, there is an option, some of the blessings, some of the charm upgrade slots gonna have an option to apply to all. And one of that option is, all options yellow. So if you apply to all, every single yellow charm that you have is gonna have increased uh, value depending on the charm upgrade slot. But at this point, you want to use legendary charm slots and you want to focus on legendary charms. And specifically on legendary affixes, which are either. Maximization chance or strike damage up, but it's it, it's not gonna work for every single build. It's not gonna work for sentries, dots, dot builds, and so on. But this is very gener generalized idea, and I'm just talking about what people most of the time use. Strike damage jump, yeah. These legendary affixes on legendary charms are the best. At the same time. You want to use Charm Upgrade slots with the Legendary stuff and always use Legendary Charm slot upgrade on the Legendary Charms that have these nodes. Because some of the Charm Upgrade slots can increase the Legendary Affix by like 100%. You can study that, it's, 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 it shouldn't supposed to be hard to understand and, uh, and they have a guide on this so I'm gonna leave it in the description. Lacrima. So, right now... Any Lakima is not gonna fit. If you have blue yellow, you want any weapon with at least 70 or 80 percent efficiency on it. And if you are aiming really big, you want legendary. And you want legendary with two hand, one hand or off hand, which is necessary. And then you can get uh, shoulders. That's basically, for example, Y shoulders for Comet Torch, right? But those are bis uniques. They are expensive, but that's how you're gonna get your damage. There is a cheaper versions you can do. You can always, like if you have a two-hander, you can do watch a stick. Watch a stick is good for skills that lack some cleave, some area effect or some weapon range. At the same time, it's golden sunset. Golden sunset is really cheap. And breaker of cycle, I think it's called like that, but this one, be careful to use this one. It's really hard to use. Only works for maximization chance builds. Maximization chance builds. Yeah, I'm gonna call it maximized. So to keep it the same. After that, the only thing I can say is just enchanting. Craft your authorities, get your good legendary affixes, ancient affixes, add jewels. Yeah, it's all about all about just crafting. Single authority, double authority, triple authority, start it from single, go double, go triple. Main idea from authorities is just 
to buff your enhanced skill rune. There are some attack speed stuff, but yeah. This basically sums it up. Unique items, I'm talking about best uniques, and those are setup dependent. I don't know what skill you're gonna play, but some of the best uniques, I'm talking about the same Comet Perch, I'm talking about... Uh... Oh my god, what am I talking about? Mm, Hamal's Verdances, right? Akuban's Thunderbolt, yeah, those stuff. So yeah, Rune Mastery levels. I didn't want to talk to add a lot of value to Rune Mastery levels, but Rune Mastery levels is decent. And I would say at least what you want to get is damage amp against enemies affected by status effects. What status effects? That depends on your build. But if you have every single status effect, that equals 50% damage amp, which is huge. That's almost as equal as what blessings from the tier 9 care star give you. Only the blessings, not the charms themselves. If you're done with that, you can go into movement speed, block expertise, enhanced potion duration and effect. There is a lot of stuff on rune mastery levels, I don't want to get into big about it, but yeah, there is a lot of stuff you can do and a, lot, and a little bit of easy damage you can pick up. Skill board min maxing. So yeah, again, Thunderbolt, most of the people using it in Lacrima, Weekend Totem is nice paper damage especially in the training arena. I don't even know if there is a lot of things to say about this, but this is where you already have your skill board done and you're only looking for any extra damage you can get. Rapid seals, illusion hooks, utility skills, illusion axes, counter attacks, blood explosions to extract some energies if, if energy builds are good and so on, so on, so on. I know this is a really primitive stuff, however, some of the people need to hear this and need to have an idea of what's going on. After that, there is meta stuff. I called it meta because meta stuff in Season 5 Exodium was Enhanced Potion Effect Belts. And those belts were giving like 50-60% damage jump. What are gonna be Season 6 meta? I have no idea. Maybe energies, maybe some other stuff that they're gonna introduce. Maybe that, that tier 10 Chaos Star is gonna be meta. No, I'm joking. But yeah, this is a big question mark. I don't know what it's gonna be. But if Enhanced Potion Effect Belt stays, and at the same time we can do energies, oh my god, our damage is gonna skyrocket. And the last one that I left is Rebirth Season. About this one, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say as we don't have that much info and they're releasing this video basically before Tuesday, before we get, before we're supposed to get the uh, skill and link room, balance changes and so on, so yeah. So the only thing I can tell about Rebirth Season right now is Ancient Tier 10 Chaos Orb, which is supposed to be from the Serpents and Offering System, and about Offering System, only one thing to say, focus on easy tasks. So yeah, GG's. It's been a long one, it's been a 40 minute one, but I hope it's gonna help, maybe it's not. If it does, I'm happy, if it doesn't, I'm gonna try the next time, but the HDs are fun, and see you guys in the season. I'm gonna be playing Rebirth mode, I'm gonna streaming basically every single day right now, so if you're interested, if you have some questions, you can come onto the stream, I'm streaming on YouTube, on Twitch, just ask something if you have some questions. But the energies are fun and see you guys on the upcoming season.